Hi, it's Priam here from Niche Advice. I'm an independent mortgage broker and I thought I'll do some quick fire questions around buy to let for the novices, for people that are looking to get into uh, uh, buy to let properties but don't own their own residential properties. They basically don't own anything and they want to be, you know, they've been watching all the videos online and they want to be millionaires. They want to get there, they want to buy a property, they want to refurb it, they want to do it up, they want to buy five more properties. Those guys, okay, you guys, okay, the ones that you've clicked on this video, this is for you, okay, because I get so many inquiries about the same questions, I thought we'll run through them. Just to add, as there are a number of questions here, what I've done is I've put the, all the questions on the descriptions with links to the specific sections on the video, so you can go and skip it if you want, but I suggest you don't because there are lots of good information within these questions and certainly within the answers, guys, so do not click away. Am I classed as a first time buyer? Well, if you own a property in the UK, then you're not a first time buyer. If you've owned the property in the UK, let's say 10 years ago, uh, whether it's mortgaged or not mortgaged, you're classed as a next time buyer, okay? But from a landlord's perspective here, a first time buyer is someone, or, or really from a lending perspective, do you own a home? Do you own a house? Do you own property? If not, then you're treated as a first time landlord, first time buyer. Okay, so even if you've owned a property 10 years ago, um, but you don't own a residential property right now, you're treated as a first time buyer, first time landlord. And that comes with its own set of problems, guys. Right, okay, so second question, what is the minimum deposit I can put down? Well, the minimum deposit you can put down is probably about 15, well, 15 to 20%. Would not recommend it at all. Obviously, this is an information uh, video, so, um, you know, you've got to do your own research and seek professional, independent advice, um, such as niche advice, funny enough, but there are lots and lots of great brokers out there. But the reality is, look, you know, most of the market is sitting at 75% loan to value, which means you need 25% deposit. There are a few products out there that would require less deposit. In my opinion, they're not very good. In my opinion, they're horrible. In my opinion, you should stay away from them as a first time buyer looking to make money. You're gonna lose money, potentially, if you don't know what you're doing. And what you want is a security of having some equity in the deal, and more importantly, having a good product, which you're not gonna have if you put uh, low, low amounts of deposit down. So minimum, I would say 75%, which is 25% deposit, the more the merrier. Right, next one. Uh, can my parents help me to purchase the property? Yes, they can, okay? It really depends why you need their help, okay? Is it because you could, for example, go in with them? So I've done a number of deals whereby maybe the father and the son, they buy together. We use the father's fact that he owns a property as a plus point, and then we use the son's income to maybe get around the income rules, if there is any. Um, so yeah, lots of times we're doing them. We're doing multiple people, maybe up to four people buying together. So children with, with parents buying together. We can do joint borrower sole proprietor, which is basically um, you, you go on the stamp duty, you go on the title of the property, you're buying with your parents, but they don't have to do that, which can potentially help with stamp duty. Um, so there are options around buying with parents. You can buy with parents and maybe come off the mortgage in a few years time. They can just help you to get on the um, stepping stone. There are, like I said, tax implications and there are financial implications that need to uh, be sorted out. You should really uh, seek professional tax advice when you're trying to do something wild and wacky. Um, next one, does my income matter? Well, yes, it does. As a first time buyer, first time landlord, it certainly does. But hang on a minute, Priam, it's a rental property. Doesn't the rent cover it? Yeah, the rent covers it, but what happens when shit goes wrong? And I do say shit goes wrong because sometimes it really does go wrong, okay? Um, so what happens if there's a rent rental void? What happens if the tenants stop paying? What happens if the boiler goes? What happens if there's a plumbing leak? How are you gonna cover it? I get so many calls from clients who say, well, I've got my deposit money. Well, that's all good. What do you do? Well, I'm not working at the moment. So what's going to happen um, when you know things go wrong? Yeah, but I've got more money. Well, the lender wants you to have more money. They want you to have more than your 25% deposit or 30% deposit. But they also want you to have some residual income. Can you point to another property? Well, no, because you're a first-time landlord, first-time buyer. So you can't point to another property that's generating income. 
So you need to point to your payslip or to your self-employment income. So they're very important. You know, they do look at that quite closely. They normally look at it and they will say, okay, if is the guy or, or lady who's looking to buy buy a property, does their income cover the mortgage amount as if it was your residential property? So could they buy the property as a residential, not a buy to let? They want to make sure for two faults: one, you're covering the rental void, but two. You're not doing it as a backdoor residential. What I mean by that is you're buying it as a buy to let, but you can't really afford it to get it as a residential. That's why you're doing a buy to let mortgage. Lots of this used to happen back in the day where people were putting 25% deposits down and moving into it, buying it as a buy to let, which is essentially fraudulent. So the lenders to protect themselves, they always have this rule, they'll say, a lot of them will have this rule to say, is, could they buy it as a residential if they wanted to? And if they could, then say, well, okay, well, they've taken a conscious decision to buy it as a buy to let, which means we feel a lot more comfortable. Other lenders, when you're a first time landlord, um, would put uh, minimum income levels, 40K, 50K, 60K, all right? It's not unusual to have those sort of minimum income levels. They're trying to protect themselves against the back door residential rule. Okay, what if your income's low? Well, get that all the time. It's not, it's not illegal to have low income. Um, there are ways, for example, I touched on buying with, with someone who has got good income, okay? Um, you know, but you know, you're buying a property together, so make sure it's a long-term investment and you both understand how you, how you get into it, but how you get out of it. So we get a lot of it where siblings are buying together, uh, parents are helping out. Um, we've, you know, those are the types of things. We've got friends that buy together. So yeah, you just got to be, um, you know, you just got to do your research on that, but it is possible. So that's one way to get around that rule. Joint borrower, sole proprietor. Again, I've touched on it, whereby your parents are almost, they're coming into the deal with you, but they're not putting themselves down on the title deeds. Um, will the location matter? Really important on this one. This goes back to my backdoor residential rule, okay? Lenders are nervous. They're nervous people. These lenders, honestly, they're very, very nervous. And one of the things they're nervous about is, again, you buying that party to let property because you can't afford or you don't want to move into it as a residential mortgage, okay? So what they will do is they will look at the property, they will look at your income, and I think that's the most important thing because really, if you can afford it as a residential, why would you want to buy it as a buy to let, pay a higher rate, higher deposit, and so forth? But another thing they'll look at is, where is the property? Okay, if the property is like next door or, or down the road from you, they get a little bit nervous, okay? But then they also get nervous if the property is you're in London and you're buying in Newcastle. Again, they get nervous. Why is the client buying over there? Why are they doing this? Well, the reality is a lot of property are good, great value over there and you want to make your investment. And the, frankly, you can't borrow, uh, you know, you can't buy a property in High Street Kensington as a first time. Uh, buy to let investor. So you've gone Newcastle, you've gone Hull, you've gone Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough, you've gone Blackpool, you've got somewhere else which is more affordable. But they will ask the question. They want to know why you're buying over there. Okay. So in fact, I had one today, very similar. Lady lives uh, in Croydon. What uh, is going to be moving? That was a residential actually moving to Nottingham. I had that question. What's the minimum age as a first-time uh, buyer, first-time landlord? Well. It's 18, however, a lot of the specialist lenders go between 25, and, sorry, 21 to 25. Not many that will do 18. And it just depends on how, what you're trying to do, which lender, what are the terms, what is the deal, you know, the various bits and pieces around that. Um, so yeah, can you buy in a single name if married? Get this quite a bit. Um, it could be, now these are the reasons, it could be that your parents are gifting you some money to go and buy an investment in your name. They don't really want the wife or the husband involved, okay? So yes, the theory is yes. Can your wife gift you the money and for you to buy as a buy to let investment or husband do the same? Yes, you can. We've got lenders that will do it. Um, but yeah, I, it's a little bit more, because it's an investment, because it's a investment and commercial decision you can buy in your own name and you, if you don't want your partner involved uh, you don't have to i think it's important when you disclose where the deposit funds are coming from that's very very important i will touch on it later on on this limited company first time landlord can it be done yes absolutely i've done a number of them and i'm doing quite a few more at the moment so 
yes um there are restrictions around lenders there's minimum there's some lenders that got minimum incomes others that don't one thing i would say is go back to my last point it's around your income covering the mortgage amount that's important and that's not the monthly mortgage amount i'm talking about the mortgage balance uh minimum valuation for first time buyer properties um i would say a lot of the properties at the moment is around 75k there are one or two lenders that will do less but yeah 75k is probably where it's at uh, deposit question gifts equities all right okay so this is all around deposit where can the money come from well generally most lenders will accept it from direct blood relations mother father brother sister parents some will accept wives some will accept uncles or aunts um, some will accept now you could take money out of limited companies your own limited company they may want uh, information around maybe the accountant writing a letter to say look you're not going to bleed the company dry you're not going to pull all the money out and the company goes bust um, and they want to know where the money's come from ultimately source of deposit is all to do with uk money laundering rules they want to make sure where your money's come from can it come from abroad if my parents are abroad the answer is yes it can majority of the lenders obviously they want to see an audit of where it's come from you know my parents sold the property abroad here's my legal documentation here it's my parents three months bank statement showing the money went in there here's the money transfer document that's come to my account and there's the audit trial maybe we want to see a proof of id proof of address of your parents well we would actually so um that sort of gives us the audit trail of where this money came from okay um so yes some lenders very important on the specialist arena especially if you're getting limited company and so forth would want that money to be sitting in the uk for three months others don't care as long as they can see audit trial so there's lots and lots of things around that seek professional advice around that it's very important visa can you uh if you're on a visa can you um get a buy get a buy to let mortgage the answer is yes but not as a first time buyer you need to be a homeowner first so it's a no uh, if you do not own a home already mm, there is a caveat there is a lender out there that will allow it I would say for larger loans, maybe around 150k loan size and over, and the rates are, you know, you're looking at five, six percent rates rather than, you know, the, you know, your standard buy to let mortgage. So um, it's considerably higher. So it's got to be really worth it. And you know, I would say if you are uh, living abroad, even you can do that. So if you're a foreign national living abroad, but as long as you're not in a sanctioned country and they know where the money's coming from um hmo margin let for first time buyers no i don't think so um you i think you need to have at least one property um there are ways around it okay uh, one of the ways around it is some people buy it on bridging finance they keep it on bridging finance for a little while and then they can refinance that off um so that's one of the ways people are doing that and that goes to the whole brrr strategy and i've got a video on it here but um you know that it can be done but it's just going to be more expensive okay so some people are buying and a lot more riskier so unless you're add, adding more value to it you're turning things into that you're buying a three bed semi maybe keeping it because some lenders would want um good experience as a hmo landlord okay others don't necessarily others just want to see that you're a homeowner maybe got a couple of months rent coming through and they're okay a lot of lenders when you deal with multi-lets and hmos want you to be an owner for a year so mm, yes and i know that one it's, it's, it's seek professional advice on that one can i or my family member live in the property no okay absolutely not as a first time landlord you're a first time landlord you're doing that as commercial purposes that will be called it's actually called the regulated buy to let mortgage there are rules around that and again i've done a video on it so go and check it out if you are looking to buy properties to rent out to family members you can't be a first time buyer the lenders that will lend on that will insist you owning a either owning a home but i think majority of them say you have to own a residential mortgage and the last point blemishes on my credit profile what do i do how do i get around that plan you know often do you know what this is a funny one i get i get calls from clients they go well my credit report is absolutely great it's completely fine however i was bankrupt three years ago well, that's not great, is it? <laughs> you know, that's not great. But um, if you've had credit problems, look, uh, and you, you know, you, you've come out of it, um, lenders want to see you've come out of it. They would want to see a gap. They would maybe a couple of years, some of them, if there's defaults and CCJs and so forth. 
Um, if you're looking to buy with somebody else, um, there will be rules around that. Maybe you buy with someone else, they want to see a good income profile. Um, but it's never say never. There are there are options out there, guys, if you've had credit issues. But I would say they need to be historical. The lender needs to clearly see from your credit report that these were issues and they've been resolved. But I think they want a bit of a time. You can't say, I had an issue last month and now I want to buy a property. Or even last year. Uh, it really depends on what that issue is, You know how serious it is. There's a difference between a mobile phone late payment and a and a county court judgment. Okay, so um, never say never, but there are you know there are restrictions, but it is possible. That's about it. Bit of a long one, but I hope you found it useful. Let me know if you like this format. Let me know if you want me to answer any more of your questions. Let me know if you've got any other questions, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.